So did you spot where Blackpool Simon and Phil was in last week's episode of the Rail Roundup? Yes, the two titans of rail were spotted at Preston Station, but that's not the last of those two. We've got a Where's Phil coming up and we've got a little bit of an update from Blackpool Simon. But what else is coming up in this week's Rail Roundup? <laughs> Brand new battery technology to be trialled on TransPennine trains. East Midlands Railway train at 104 miles now was involved in a near miss with a track worker. Behind the scenes of TPE's new timetable. Grade 2 listed Wigan Bridge to be raised for railway electrification. You know what I was saying to you earlier on? It's really great when the heart steam comes to order and everything. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And also to come along the Rail Roundup platform, Railcam managed to capture a rare sight of 93 the 001, making its little debut journey. We can find out what you've been able to all off the rails with the your turn, special spotters, and also to find out who's won this week's photo of the show. So testing of the UK's first intercity battery train commenced this week. Uh, the battery, which generates a peak power of more than 700 kilowatts, has now been fitted successfully or retrofitted into a TransPennine Express Nova 1 train. That's a five carriage intercity 802 ahead of the trial of TransPennine's routes this summer. This is the first UK trial where a diesel engine is replaced with a battery on an intercity train. The trial is collaborated between Transpan and Express and Angel Trains and Hatachi Rail. The single battery unit is incredibly powerful, storing enough electricity to power more than 75 houses for a day. This impressive energy and power density will deliver the same levels of high speed acceleration and density while being no heavier than the diesel engine that it replaces. The installation of the battery will reduce emissions and improve energy efficiency. It is predicted to reduce emissions and fuel costs by as much as 30% on an Atachi intercity train. Most importantly for passengers, the trial will now test how intercity trains can either alight and leave non-electrified stations in zero emission battery mode to improve air quality and reduce noise pollution. The battery is being manufactured by Turn Tide Technologies in Sunderland, utilising the battery sector that has developed in the northeast of England and capable of running up to 100 kilometres in battery mode. Now, some interesting news um, on the morning of the 23rd of April, around about 9 o'clock in the morning, I think, uh, an East Midlands railway train travelling over 100 miles an hour was involved in a near miss with a track worker. On the down fast line, about 2.7 miles north of Harpden Station in Herefordshire, the track worker was crossing an underbridge when the train approached the bridge and did not have the required clearance between the bridge parapet and the nearest running rail for the track worker to be far enough away from the train. Now, an investigation by the RAIB, an independent body, will publish the findings, including any recommendations to improve the safety at the conclusion of their investigation. And of course, you can always find their conclusions on their website. I'm glad, I'm glad nobody got hurt. Now, some really exciting news uh, going back to Transpan and Express. They've been showing a behind the scenes uh, video um, about some of the changes that they're doing to their uh, railway services in June, as well as encouraging customers to be prepared, prepared, prepared to check their journeys. 
So the new timetable uh, will be brought in from Sunday the 2nd of June along with the rest of the National Rail Network. Now this behind the scenes video gives customers an insight of the hard work that goes on in creating a timetable while the train companies continue to prioritise running reliable services for their customers. Hello, I'm Luke Gardner. I'm the Timetable Development and Delivery Manager here at Transpennine Express. And I'm here today to talk you through the changes that we'll be making at the June 24 timetable change. Now, people often ask me, why do you change the timetable? You know, there's nothing actually happening or, you know, very little. So why do you do this? Well, as an industry, it's an agreed timescale that we change it twice a year. And whilst us at Transpennine, maybe for a particular timetable, don't change very much, we interface on a network with lots of other train operating companies and freight operating companies who may be themselves introducing new services or amending their services. And as I say, we share our routes nearly unanimously across the entire network. And so we sometimes need to change trains because they do too. We might change our timetable for operational reasons. This is the kind of nuts and bolts of stuff that happens underneath, not particularly necessarily that interesting, but uh, things such as train crew knowledge may change. There may be engineering works on for a longer period of time that require us to plan them on a long-term basis. Timetables uh, are ultimately the custody of Network Rail. So Network Rail will put together all bids from all operators. We'd like to run at 8 o'clock from York to Newcastle, calling it Darlington and Durham, for example. Uh, and they will take that and put it in kind of the bigger picture, along with what LNER might want, what Cross Country might want, what freight operators want. And really, our jobs as train planners is to make sure that's the very best it can be. So there's a continual back and forth uh, really between us as an operator and Network Rail uh, as the custodian of the overall overarching timetable. So we use a variety of uh, different pieces of software in train planning. Uh, our main program that we use is something called Voyage Plan. That's where we plan our schedules when we're analysing uh, sections of route and trying to work out the paths of trains. We use the TPS software which Network Rail use. So we need to consider all parts of the puzzle. It's always good to see what goes on behind the scenes, isn't it? And one of the pinnacles of our railway is Network Rail. And ahead of some electrification, they've got uh, an issue as regards a grade two listed bridge that needs to be raised in Wigan to allow the fizzy knitting to be installed. The 100 million pound electrification project will improve travel across the Northwest by allowing greener, cleaner and quieter electric trains to run on the line. Road and footbridges across the route will need to be raised so the 25,000 volt electric wires can be safely installed above the railway with plenty of safe distance for most tourists and pedestrians. Deep Pit Bridge is a recently Grade 2 listed footbridge on the border of Hindley and Ince in Wigan. The raising of Deep Pit Bridge will see two new ramps installed giving the bridge a complete step free access for the first time in its 150 year life. Once the bridge is raised, the project team can prepare to install the electric wires between Hinley and Ince. Work to the bridge is due to start in summer 2024 and be completed by early 2025. Now, last week I visited the East Lancashire Railway with my best buddy from Bolton, Mark, to find out a little bit more about what goes on behind the scenes, also to help them promote the railway, uh, not just for the services they provide, but as regards the funding that's necessary to be generated to keep the Heritage Railway, the fantastic Heritage Railway, um, going. So I was invited down there by Johnny from the Bully High Jolly Group and then Mark Hill himself, who's one of the uh, the controllers of the railway, shall we say, uh, who introduced us to Trackside Pub, which I didn't know was available to patrons just walking off the street, and the food in there is fantastic. The black pudding stack was amazing. I can't recommend that enough. So if you're passing, get yourself in there and also find out what the Heritage Railway is doing. Now, I'm always banging on about supporting your local Heritage Railway, and this is my way of getting in with the Heritage Railway, obviously in Lancashire. Uh, to showcase what exactly they do and what they need to keep the Heritage Railway going. Now, they are doing a couple of campaigns at the moment. One is about a workshop 
which has to raise some money to give us some TLC. It's the oldest workshop in the world, the continuation of activity in there from the day of concept to today. Continually being a workshop for the railways, which is absolutely fantastic. But another part of the features of the railway is a viaduct called Higher Wood Hill Viaduct, which is a pinnacle part of the railway, a very important part of the railway itself that needs some TLC. But of course, they've got to get the funding together, either from the government or from you and I, to pay attention to that viaduct. With that viaduct not being able to be in use, would definitely have an effect on services. Now it's not in a state where it will, will affect the safety or the risk of passengers, but they are forward thinking about raising some money to try and give it some TLC to keep that ride up lasting for a long time. <laughs> She's always interrupting my videos, you just need to check out the, uh, the storm chase videos as well. well. We'll let her off. So steam trains have been travelling through this region uh, over the beautiful Irwell Valley uh, for over, I think for the past 175 years. Behind the scenes of the main features of running the trains, there are many duties from wheat killing, serving delicious food at the trackside pub, to a steam engine, pulling a dining service or preserving the infrastructure of the East Lancashire Railway Heritage Line, an important role that this upkeep will keep the wheels rolling for the beautiful heritage trains and the passengers it carries for many more years. And that is why the railway is undertaking vital community appeals for essential, for essential. Essential, hang on. Essential. essential 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 appeal for essential maintenance work on the viaduct as the last repairs were carried out in 1932 regular inspections are carried out on the structure and while there are no question marks around its safety repairs are required to allow for the continued level of steam and diesel trains in many months to come i'll be visiting the railway oh well, i need to talk to the camera about this don't i that's me, this bit's for me. So in many months to come, I'll be visiting the Heritage Railway. I'll be filming it a little bit behind the scenes, get some good sexy B-roll as well, especially talking more about the viaduct and the workshop to help raise awareness and obviously funds for the railway. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's my way of supporting a Heritage Railway because, you know, they don't get much money at all from the government or from authorities. It's all based on passengers keeping the trains going, which isn't cheap to run or maintain. And it's part of our heritage. You know, we invented the railways. So we should be there to make sure we keep them preserved and going for you and I and for many generations to come for many, many more years. <laughs> Without your help, these channels simply would not exist. And this goes to us expense, the time, and obviously the fuel to create any of the content across the Nodlog channels. Everything is much appreciated and every penny goes just to the channels. So if you want to support the channels, look in the description area down below for the relevant links, or just type nodrog.uk and look for the membership page. So like I said, there's a campaign for the Viaduct. There's a campaign for the world's oldest continually operating railway workshop. Uh, of course, I'll be mentioning more about this as, uh, as the months go on. And uh, the railway is now calling on tens of thousands of visitors who enjoy riding on its trains all year round to show how much they care by this online appeal. Now, if you want to help them or have any questions at all um, or any ideas before I go out there filming, then you can by all means get in contact with me. You can email me railroundup at mail.com or you can pledge your support by using the link in the description area down below. Right, it's now to find out what Blackpool Simon has to say while he gives us a little update 
with his TPE-ness. Oh, no, I can't say that, can I? <laughs> no, I can't say that, though. No, 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 I'm going... <laughs> right. <clears throat> Should we get a little update from, <laughs> from Bottle Simon? <laughs> folks uh welcome to another me update <laughs> um so it's the weekend uh i wasn't in the in the last round roundup because uh, i'm quite busy with um finishing up uh, what i need to do with regards to training and things so my route learning is done uh, we've finished all the main line and uh all of the uh, diversions we have into glasgow and uh previous week uh we finished up my Class 802 training, again, I had to redo that because there's certain things with regards to the, the TP, the Tati stock with regards to the like differences between them and the LLAR stock. So yes, I did use this item, but obviously it had to be redone. So I'm now fully competent on that, uh, passed out on Tuesday, and now I am completely, I've had a couple of minor shifts where I had to have sort of someone out with me just to, as a backup, but I'm a qualified conductor, so it didn't really need to be done. But uh, that's all done now, and as of next Wednesday, um, it's my first shift out on my own again. So you'll see me out and about on my own uh, as I uh, <laughs> as I crack on again. So a few updates uh, from TP. Um, first of which is uh, uh, regarding a, a particular unit eight zero two two one five. Now that unit has been um, sort of offered the sidings for quite a while. Um, they had a bit of an issue with uh, reliability in regards to the brakes, uh, something that they tried to diagnose. They're not entirely sure what the fault was. Um, so obviously due to the, the nature of the fault, they obviously took it out and it has been left um, until it's uh, been able to be fixed. Why do you come and trot around when I'm doing things? <laughs> um, so uh, we, not much of an update with regards to 802205. They are investigating what the problem is and hopefully we'll have that unit back out again. Hit down, thank you. Uh, also with the Mark V fleet, um, the five have gone off lease now, um, and apparently eight of them are having to remain with us. They were supposed to go off lease uh, with TP uh, on the 31st of May. Uh, that isn't gonna happen at the moment. Uh, apparently eight of them are gonna have to stay with us uh, due to some uh, minor flaws or, uh, what should I say? Um, faults they've had uh, so uh, defects so um so that tp are gonna have to fix before they go off lease to the leasing company i do believe they're gonna go to uh chilton i think actually that is confirmed i've seen someone post somewhere that uh, a, a couple of sets are going to chilton um as of i think is it june i think potentially so we'll see uh, what happens with that uh tp again uh on the 2nd of June, we are going to be uh, reintroducing some of the services that were taken away in COVID times. So we are going to have a, a few more services reintroduced uh, sort of bolster our fleet and uh, the running up and down the West Coast main line. So uh, we will be, there's a few services that terminate at Preston currently that are actually going to start running back into Liverpool Lime Street and uh, a few services that were taken away and now are going to be reintroduced uh, back into the timetable. So we'll watch out for that. We'll have a lot more. Uh, services when I come down the west coast. Uh, not a lot of changes with the east coast, unfortunately. They're, you know, that, that's still up in the air with regards to what the government are actually doing with that. So we'll see uh, in the future whether they change that or not. Uh, apparently, there's a uh, five billion pound investment in the Class One Eight Five fleet uh, with regards to reliability and um, the state of the, the the sort of the toilet. I know the toilets are a big issue with the One Eight Fives. They're constantly needing to be reset and uh, service flushed and all this sort of thing. So they are investing it five million pounds in, in the 185 fleet. Uh, I, I heard also that um, Chris Jackson, our uh, managing director, had a had a trip over to Ardwick recently and was very impressed with regards to um, how Siemens look after the 185 fleet. They are uber reliable, to be fair to them. Uh, apparently there's also um, a mid-service uh, they're going to start introducing a mid-service for the the engines. Uh, currently, when the engines need a service, they have to be taken out of the 185s and sent to um, specific companies to have uh, services done. But apparently, they're they're investing in a, a mid 
life service for the 185 engine. So uh, that's quite interesting to see that they're actually going to do that in house. Don't know what I want to tell you really. That's that's about it at the moment. Um, I will keep you posted. I keep trying to keep an eye out for. Uh, anything new at the moment. Uh, I know the 769s, uh, I did catch one actually at uh, Kilmarnock. Unfortunately, I'd passed it uh, by the time I'd gone through. Uh, there was at the Caledonia Works there in Kilmarnock and I, I, I sort of caught the back end of one uh, as it was halfway in the shed. Also did see uh, an ex um, Scott Rail 156 being done up into uh, Northern livery. So I'm assuming, uh, Mr. Phil, hopefully you can uh, update us with that. Uh, I think some of the one, uh, 156s are due to head down to Northern shortly. So uh, I'll, I'll, again, I'll keep an eye out for that. Hopefully Nor um, Mr. Northern himself, Phil, will be able to help us out with that one. Um, but uh, yeah, at the moment, uh, a few diversions are across our route as well. Actually, I've seen uh, the nuclear flasks making their way down this way with a couple of... Uh, Class 68 attaches to them, so that was quite interesting to see. Um, and uh, that's about it for now. If I hear anything more, and uh, as things become available, you can follow me again on Twitter. I'll post what I can on there. Um, that's the quickest way to see what's happening. If not, I'll just uh, keep on doing my weekly updates uh, if I can, and uh, as information becomes available. So uh, watch your space, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Try for now, guys. Yes, cheers, Sam. It's always great to hear what you have to offer. Sorry for that little Freudian slip of, uh, of my tongue there, but we all know it's all, uh, it's all fun. Right, so let's find out what you've been getting up to on Off The Rails with a... Your turn. Thank you.
Why, Lady Jutterland? Here it comes. The Danish engine. Third time I've been in this. Oh, yes. Here she comes. <laughs> how loud that window is! Oh my goodness! Yes, brilliant contributions as per usual. If you want your content to be featured on a your turn like i always say please just upload your videos as a standalone item don't put pictures with it or multiple uh, videos with it. just an individual video on the your railway community facebook page because it's damn so easier for me to pinch them off there and edit it together in the next episode of the rail roundup same goes for photo of the show <laughs>
which is then supplemented as well by a 540 horsepower battery, allowing the locomotive to be used both on electrified and non-electrified lines. Rail operations groups currently, I believe, are the sole operator, um, and I think they've ordered 10 of these. So they're very special locomotives. They've been talking about these for a while, and they're doing this little debut rare glimpse up and down the rails. If you manage to capture it, again, please share it with us on the RLA community Facebook page. Um, is that everything? Yep, there we go. We've come to a close of this week's edition. Thank you very much for your support and uh, watching the recent rail roundups. Um, as usual, all I ask you to do if you want to um, help keep the rail roundups going, just pledge your support. Links in the description area down below to join us on Patreon for as little as 99p a month. Uh, the more people that join, obviously, it makes it easier for me to find the time to produce these videos. And it's just your little way as well, I suppose, that's saying thank you. Um, towards the uh, the rail roundups going out because you know they do take time not just to film but to edit and I try and produce them the best way possible I don't rush I try not to right so yeah so whatever you're doing over the next week make sure you get out there on the rails and support Heritage Rail or anything you can possibly do to bang the drum for the industry and for the hobby don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time ta -ra.